In this video, we're going to talk about number 6 from the 2010 AP Calculus AB free response questions. Um, and it, uh, One thing to note is that this is a no calculator allowed question. So it starts by saying solutions to the differential equation dy dx is equal, uh, equals x times y cubed also satisfy the second derivative equal to y cubed times y 1 plus 3x squared y squared. Uh, and then let y equal f of x be a particular solution to the differential equation dy dx is equal to x times y cubed with f of 1 equal to 2. Write an equation for the tangent line of the graph of y equals f of x at x equals 1. Use that tangent line equation from part a to approximate f of 1.1 Given that f of x is greater than 0 for, one, for x between 1 and 1.1, is the approximation for f of 1.1 greater than or less than f of 1.1? Explain your reasoning. And then find the particular solution y equals f of x with initial condition f of 1 equals 2. So now that we know what we have to do, let's do it. Let's move this out of the way so we've got some more room. Now for part a... If we want to write the equation of a tangent line, we know we're just looking for a linear equation, so we need a point and a slope. The point they give us is 1, 2, and the slope I need to find. To find the slope, we use the derivative. So since dy dx equals x times y cubed, just plug in what we know which is that x is 1 and y is 2. When we work that out, we get a slope of 8. So my tangent line then in point slope form is y minus 2 is equal to my slope 8 times x minus 1. And that's my tangent line. So, I'm going to shrink that a little bit so I have room for part B. I'm not going to make it go totally away because I might need to use this in part B. So, in part B it says use that tangent line to approximate f of 1.1. And that shouldn't be too bad. We just use the exact thing, the exact equation we had there, and plug in 1.1 for x. So, y minus 2 equals 8 times 1.1 1 .1 minus 1, which is going to give me y minus 2 is equal to 0 0.8. And so y equals 2.8. And that's the first part of part B, but then I have to know, is that approximation greater than or less than 1.1? And we have to explain how we know that. And whenever they ask these, is your approximation more or less than questions, the way I like to think about it is I like to think about, is my graph increasing or is it decreasing? And is it concave up or is it concave down? And because I know that the slope at 2, I'm sorry, at, uh, at 1 is 8, so it's positive. I know I have an increasing function. And then if I look at the second derivative, this is where that second derivative is going to play a role for me. I know that in my second derivative, I'm also going to check whether that's positive or negative to see whether or not I have a concave up or concave down function. Um, so I look at this second derivative, and when I plug in 2 for y, I get 8 times 1 plus 3 times 1 
times 4, which is clearly positive. Now, because that's positive, I know that I have a function that is increasing at an increasing rate. Essentially, my graph looks something, and it might not look like this at all, but in general, it's got an increasing slope like that. So any tangent line is always going to go underneath it. So we have a underestimate. And so let's shrink this up just a little bit here. So what we'll say is my approximation was an underestimate. So we'll say y is approximately 2.8. Um, what do they, how do they say, they say it's less than, we'll say is less than f of 1.1 1 .1 because f is increasing and concave up. And we can see from the picture there that that makes my tangent line an underestimate. So there we go. Now let's get rid of that so we have some room for part C. So we've got A, B, and C over there on the, or I'm sorry, we've got A and B over there on the right side. Now let's do part C where we have to find the particular solution. So to find the solution to the differential equation, we start with the differential equation. And the most common way that um, we do this in AP Calculus AB is we separate our variables. We want all the y's on the left and all the x's on the right. So I will get y to the negative third dy on the left equals x dx on the right. Now, because I have only y's on the left and I have this differential dy and only x's on the right and this differential dx, I just integrate both sides. And it's nice, simple power rule in both cases. So we get negative one-half y to the negative second is equal to positive one-half x to the positive second, just using the power rule for integration, plus c. I always have to include a plus c whenever I do an indefinite integral, and I only need to include one plus c, though, because if I included one on each side, I would just combine the two constants and get another constant, so there's no reason to do that. And now they do want us to find y equals f of x. We can see here where they say find this particular solution y equals f of x that we want, y, we want to get y by itself. Um, and I'm going to need to know c because I want a particular solution. So what I like to do then is um, just plug in my points right away, right now, and solve for c. So we'll do... Uh, this is, I'm going to rewrite this a little bit, it's negative 1 over 2 times y is 2, so that's 2 squared, getting a little bunched up there, sorry, equals 1 half times 1 squared plus c. And so on the left, let's move this over. Let's shrink this just a little bit to get a little bit more room here. There we go. 
a little bit more room here. There we go. So on the left, I have a negative, well, let's just multiply it out. Um, this is going to be a negative 1 eighth equals 1 half plus C. When I combine, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to bring that negative 1 half over to the other side. And if you do negative 1 half uh, minus 1, I'm sorry, negative 1 eighth minus 1 half, we get uh, negative 5 eighths for C. Now we just need to plug that in and get Y by itself. So let's start back where we were over here. And we get negative 1 half Y to the negative second is equal to 1 half X squared. Now instead of plus C, I have minus 5 eighths. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply through by, oops, that doesn't look like a negative second. There we go. I'm going to multiply through by negative 2. So then I'll get 1 over y squared is equal to negative x squared plus 5 fourths. And now because the y squared is on the bottom and the x the negative x squared plus 5 fourths, I can imagine that all being over 1. I can just sort of cross multiply here, um, or really just switch them, and get 1 over negative x squared plus 5 fourths is equal to y squared. So then my very last step, square root both sides, y equals the square root, leave myself plenty of room here, 1 over negative x squared plus 5 fourths. And there we go. That is the solution to number six.